Today is Wednesday, June 15th, and we are talking to Mr. Alf Stoll. Is that how you pronounce your name? That is correct. And wife Barbara. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Stoll, can you tell me where you were born? Yeah, I can't do that. I was born at Tysnes, Norway, uh, a little town in south of Bergen, Norway, on the west coast. Can you tell us what year? That was in 1927. And how long did you live in Norway? I lived there till I was, uh, let's see, I came here in 47. I was 20 years old when I came to the United States. And what brought you to the United States? Well, I came here to uh, study engineering. I see. We had engineering school, uh, schools and you know, universities in Norway as well, but they were closed by the Germans during the war. And so when the war was over, there was uh, several high school graduating classes that stood in line to get in, so I wouldn't be with the, I would be sort of down the line of ways. But I was fortunate enough to go to Oklahoma State uh, University in Stillwater, Oklahoma, and there I studied engineering. Well, when you came here, uh did you come with family? No, I came as a young boy, 20 years old. 20? Yeah. What ship did you come on? Do you remember the name? Yeah. I, 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 I helped the electrician on board and got the free passage. Wow. And uh, that name of the ship was Anna Odlan, and it was from Haugesund, Norway. And they didn't have much in the boat going across, but they go to uh, New York City first, and that just suited me fine because that's where my uh, most of my relatives were living. So I stayed with them until school opened. Did you come in through Ellis Island? No, no, no. I came here as, an, as, a, as a student on a student visa. Oh, I see. Not actually like as an immigrant. No, I did not come as an immigrant. Student visa. I see. You came in with a visa for how long? How long was your visa supposed to well, be? Well, that was uh, supposed to be as long as I went to school. I could renew it uh, every year, I guess. And then uh, I had an opportunity to stay another, I think, either year and a half or two years, uh, a, a, a gaining experience in, uh, in the industry in the United States. So that's what I did. And then I uh, and then my employer found out I had to leave, then he said, no, you're not going to leave. So he ended up getting me, uh, or helping me get uh, get the uh, U.S. citizenship. At that point, had you decided on a specialty of engineering? Oh, yes. I was graduate electrical engineer, electrical. veteran, and, uh, and master at Oklahoma State. Well, those days it was called Oklahoma A&M College. Mm -hmm. Still was a, there was a huge uh, college those days. Well, of all the universities across this country, how did you pick, or how was it decided? I, uh, it was uh, arranged through an Institute of International Education in New York, which had contact with various uh, universities in Europe, including uh, University of Oslo, and uh, it was through that Institute in New York that I was placed in Oklahoma State. Was it hard being here by yourself? Um, mm -hmm. Did you know English well when you came? No, I didn't know it well, but I knew it fairly well. <laughs> Today, the children in, in, in Europe, or especially in Norway, they all speak English because they learn to speak. I didn't learn to speak too well. I could write it and could read it, and uh, the conversation was not so good. But it didn't take long. You know, 20 years old, you learn fast. Sure. And I had to. Well, I mean, no, just. Nobody does to speak Norwegian too, so it didn't take long. Right. You better take that phone. You want me to take it? Would you like to make it? No. Well, we are also me. talking today to. Oh, oh. Get it. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, okay. We will let wife Barbara answer the phone, so we'll continue yeah. talking to Al. Was yeah. is that your full name? Hello? No. Yes. It's Al actually Alf Johan. Stöhle. Alf is the first name, Johan is the second name, and then the last name is Stöhle, which is pronounced here Stoll. Oh, really? Uh -huh. I see. It would be pronounced 
Different. Well, in the end, it helps. most people said it, so I just accepted it. That's <laughs> it. And of course, Alf is Alf. You don't pronounce an A here like you do, maybe in England or somewhere. In Norway, an A is always an A. So we pronounce it Alf? Alf. Alf. Alf, yeah. Okay. And we'd like to also talk to Barbara. And Barbara, can I ask you where you were born? Springfield, Missouri. Okay. Would you give us a date or would you? Uh, sure. <laughs> Everybody knows after this tornado, they keep saying Barbara stole age 78. <laughs> you know, before then, nobody knew. I'm 78. Um, I was born in Springfield and um, graduated. I went to Southwest Missouri State down in Springfield and then I came to St. Louis and I met Alf in St. Louis. Well, let's ask just a little bit briefly about you. It, um, when you were growing up, did you go to public or private school? I went to a state affiliated school. Um, Southwest Missouri State had a, well, they called it the training school. And they had 30 students per grade, one through high school. And I went there. It was a very good school. Um, um, I, I loved it, I, and you got to know everyone very well because it was like, it was a small school, and so everybody was a personal friend. What did you major in in school? Well, in when I went to college, I majored in home ec. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was always interested in that. Right. Yes. And did you graduate with a degree? In right. And then I, I came to St. Louis, and I met Alf here in St. Louis. I thought he was Italian. Right. He spoke good English, but he was dark, and I thought all Norwegians were blonde with yeah, blue sure. eyes, you know? Sure. Um, but he, but I thought he was Italian when I first met him. I can understand that. So now, did you have a job when you came here to St. Louis? Did you find a... Um, I worked in um, retailing, buyer, assistant buyer in retailing. It's over at the old Sticks Bear Fuller. Where was that? Six Baron Fuller. I, but what location? Downtown or? Uh, downtown and then the, the West Roads, the, the county, uh, mm -hmm. like where Galleria is now. Sure. Did you work with uh, Vaya Lamoff? No, that she sounds... She was a cosmetics buyer at for a long time. I think, I think I know who you were talking about. Yes. She was the mother of my, one of my best friends in high school. Really? It's a small world. Yes, it is. Well, what was Alf doing then when you met him? We went to a social function and I met him there. But as I said, I thought he was an Italian. Were you working then in St. Louis? Yes, I was working for Sweldrup and Parcel. What so is it? Sweldrup and Parcel. Oh. In the electrical engineering department. And where was that located? At that time, it was. Uh, uh, on Olive Street downtown. I see. 915 Olive. So you met a man that had a job. He was uh, working. When did you... Uh... Well, of course, back in those days, you got out of college and you got a job uh, like the next month. You might take a breather, but it was so common. A college education almost guaranteed you a job back in then, but that was the 50s. Well, I think that's a good point for you to make because these days, uh, young people getting out of college aren't necessarily no. guaranteed an, a job and sometimes they have to accept something in a different right. field entirely. Right. So that's a good point for you to make. And yeah. how long did you maybe see each other date before you got married then? <laughs> uh, a couple of years um, going on that amount of time. All right. Well, where did you marry? We went back to my hometown of Springfield, Missouri, at a small wedding, and then we came back here, and um, we had a, an apartment, uh, what was the name of the place? Um, 1523 Swan Circle in Brentwood. Yes, well, I couldn't remember that, and then we got our first house after about a year. We went to West Haven, and we were the first people to move in on Margate Hall. We had a brand, all the houses were brand new then. And this is off Limburg. Right. In Bridgeton. Right, in 1960. There were first ones on the street in, in Margate, on Margate Hall in West Haven. And then we, um, we lived there. Our children grew up there. Well, I'm sorry, they, 
were born there and they went um, grade school there and they started high school there and then we went to Carrollton Oaks. Well, let's first talk about children. Who, what children do you have? Tell us who you have. And we have three children. <laughs> yes. Two girls and a boy. Okay. And presently, what are their names and ages? The oldest one is uh, Joan Aline. And uh, she, was, she was born in 1960. Brita Marie was the next. She was born in 1962. And Lars Andreas was the third. He was born in 1964. What is the son's name? Lars Andreas. L-A-R-S. So you have a lot of influence on your children's names, it I sounds did. like. That's uh, well, the only thing. <laughs> I, 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 Thank I, you. I, no, no, no. Jonathan. Um, That's pretty. It's kind of like Johanna Aline. Um, Brita Marie was, uh, who was it? Um, best of, uh, where did we get Brita? Well, I was going to, I didn't quite get my waist there. I, was, <laughs> I wanted to have it Christine right. Marie, and she didn't like Christine at all because she was thinking about this other place and some small dogs, I don't know why, but... We had a friend who had Pekingese dogs and her name was Christine. Oh. <laughs> I love the name Christine and I'm sorry, you know, but... At the time you just couldn't get well, past that. Brita Marie was just fine. And how old is Brita Marie now? She's the middle one. She, she was born in 1962, so... 48. Do any of your children live here in Bridgeton? <laughs> She's 40. 49. She's 49. I'm sorry. No. Well, let me ask you. When your children were growing up, where did they go to school? Uh, they went to Pattonville Grade School on Fifi, which of course is uh, gone now. Where was that located? Um, there. Uh, what's the name? Do you remember of the old city hall on Fifi Road? Uh, I don't recall it, uh, but. Well, you know what Branicky is? Yes. And the fire station? Yes. If you go north on Fifi, if it is, uh, it, it is the building just north of the firehouse. It's still there. That was the Pattonville grade school. I see. Is that the credit union building? Right, credit union. Right. And then they went to home. And it, it was called Pattonville Elementary? Mm -hmm. no. Okay. Mr. Teeter was the uh, principal. Very stern man. You didn't talk during lunch even. It was the old-fashioned principal, mm -hmm. and then they went to Holman Junior High School, and then they went to Pattonville High School. And they all three graduated from Pattonville. Mm -hmm. Pattonville High School had moved down to the bottoms by then. Or Is it still on the Rock Road? Was Pattonville yeah. across from Northwest Plaza, or was it where it is now on Creek Court Mill Road? It was no across. Across the Northwest. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, when your children were growing up and they were teenagers, did they have part-time jobs um, in the area, possibly at Northwest Plaza? Because you didn't live very far at all. No. Um, the girls didn't, but then again, growing up back then, all the girls didn't necessarily take summer jobs. When I was growing up as a teenager, the girls didn't take a summer job. The boys didn't. They needed money for gasoline and for dating, but the girls didn't. Uh, our girls didn't. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. Um, they didn't until they went to college. When they came home, they had summertime jobs. And they worked on an HOK, you know, the architectural firm downtown St. Louis, because they would drive in with Alf. And he, so they had neat summer jobs. Yes. Um, but when they were in high school, they didn't have summertime jobs. Now, our son worked for the street department. Really? The oh, Bridgeton Street Department. Right. They had to have their hard shoes, the hard toed shoes. I think he made, what was it, 225 an hour, maybe 325 an hour. And did he work, uh, which was good for him. And that was a coveted job, you know, not everybody could get on to the oh, street exactly. department or for the um, parks department. Um, now, Marie did work in the parks department one year as a counselor for the summer camp. Did your children go to the Bridgeton summer camps? Mine did. No, but back th they, uh, no, they didn't back then. 
Uh, they used to go into a lot of scouting things. I used to be a scout leader. Girl Scouts? Girl Scouts and Brownies, and then I was a troop camper for um, the next level. I can't think what it is. And uh, I used to work in the summer camps as well, and I would take all the kids. And so they were very involved with scouting. In fact, our son became a, he eventually became an Eagle Scout. That's wonderful. Um, so they had their summertime, when they were younger, before they could work, they were involved with uh, scouts in various ways. Were they involved in any extracurricular activities through Pattonville Band or uh, sports or um, anything? Um, John played baseball a couple of years as a, in grade school. That's our oldest. Our son was a debater. Oh. He was a very good debater. He went to nationals a couple of times. Uh, so and now when you say went to nationals, where would that be held? Uh, well, it varied from year to year. One year it was in Las Vegas. And oh, we were my delighted goodness. because they got to stay in the hotels and got to go down and have all this extra food, you know, kind of all you can eat. And, you know, I'm sure it was involved with the casino in some way, but that was an exciting <laughs> year they got to go to Las Vegas because they really ate well. Uh, I don't remember where they went. We went to Kentucky one time. Okay, into Kentucky, but he was very involved in debate. I see. Well, you've mentioned uh, Spirit and HOK, and it sounds like we're in the period where the arch was being conceived and, and designed. Were, were you involved in that process? What, what was designed? The Gateway Arch. Oh yes, we uh, Spedrick was involved in that. As a matter of fact, I was involved a little bit on it too. Uh, later on, I uh, I did some of the I did the annual check up on the on the drive that go up and down the electrical portion. I had another guy with me. He was uh, to care of the mechanical part. But yes, yeah, Spedrick was involved quite a bit in that uh, more. Did you take your children up in the yard as soon as it was? They, they have been up several times. It's quite a thrill to go up yeah. and look out. And and the movie they made of that yeah. the construction mm -hmm. is just incredible. Yeah, they've mm -hmm. shown that many times. Well, how long did you work for that company? Well, I started in 19, uh, let's see, 19, uh, 1957, I think. No, 1956 first. Yeah, January 1956, I started with them, and uh, I worked there till uh, I was a little over 65. At that time, they had me work part time out in California. And so when the people out there fire found out I was going to retire, and they didn't want to hear that, so they kept me another uh, I guess eight years out there on a part-time basis. You better answer that phone. All right, well, you didn't, you need to tell them what you were doing in California. Well, it's interesting. You need to Excuse take me. That phone. By the way, she left us up a while ago. Okay. She, Hello? When she graduated from college, oh, yeah, just a she, uh, she was a school teacher out in Kansas. Are you going to play bridge tonight? Yes. Yeah, he, he definitely, are you going to play him too? Okay. And she was a school mom for one year. Okay. You'll see. Thank you. Bye. Did she teach home economics? She did. But she they had to do other things too. He said, told us that you taught school for one year. Yeah, I did. I did. Was that a patent bill? No, no, no. I went to Kansas. Oh, oh, okay. Before you moved up here. Mm -hmm. So you, when you, uh, when your children were growing up, you lived in the area south of, um, would you call that the southern part of Bridgeton? Yeah, it was West, West Haven. West Haven. Uh -huh. And when did you move from there? What was your next move, did you say? It was uh, the Kells Noakes. Frank Clare. Frank Clare. Uh -huh. And when do you think you moved over there? Um, the children were still in high school. Um, Well, that's all right. Thank you. It was 1978, I think. Okay. Well, why, why, what prompted you to move to Carrollton? I wanted a bigger home. Um, and, and I offered good enough. He, he said, "Okay, okay, we'll move." Um, we had a three-bedroom home. It was a very nice home. It was new when we were there. 
we loved it. Uh, we went to our four bedroom, uh, one more space. Of course, eventually the kids leave to go to college, but sure. anyway. Uh, we went to a bigger spot. And then, of course, we had to move again because of the airport. Well, tell us about that. <laughs> when was that that you had to move? Well, I'll... <laughs> it, it's okay if you don't know the exact year, but... Well, 11 years ago. We've been here 11 years. We had... So it was 1990, approximately, that you moved to... Yeah, it was about in October. 1990, That you moved to your present house, which is Harmon Estates, Beaverton Drive. And as long as we're talking about this, a uh, very big major natural disaster happened just recently on um, Good Friday evening, correct? Yeah. April? April 22nd. And do you want to tell us, um, recount what happened that night? Well, uh, we went to church. What church do you go to? Beautiful Savior Lutheran Church on Natural Bridge. Okay. And uh, while we were there, we we heard the siren, but you know, hear them lots of times. So we did. When we left there, we didn't think there was anything special until we got stopped here and there and there, and we went down around, 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 trying to get some way to get in here. We finally, after two and a half hours, we we went west, we got to Lindbergh some, some way, and then we went west of Old St. Charles, and we parked over there by uh, the school in uh, Bridge, Bridgeway School. What time was this when all this was going on? Well, it was between seven and eight that the tornado was here, or well, closer to eight, I think. Yes. But by the time we got home, it was about uh, 10 30, I guess, something like that. Could you see anything? Oh, sure we could. We walked across the mayor's property up here, and as soon as we got to the top there, looked down, and we saw all the destruction. It was like a movie. It's just like a movie. Unreal. Mm. Were there um, other neighbors out walking yes. around? Yes, there was an, uh, a number of them out here on the street. Right just about right across the street, uh, so we got to talk to some of them, and they were had been worried about us because they didn't see us, so they got over here, broke the window, and opened up the door, couldn't find us here. <laughs> so, uh, some of them were out, as a matter of fact, I think there might be two families at church, and some were at, uh, some were at, uh, down at the Lake of the Ozark, uh, but the mayor was there, and also uh, people across the street. They were down there, so they didn't even know what happened. And then there was uh, you know, a number of people here. Not a single one got hurt. Uh, those that went to the basement, like Patty Faye, she just barely made it down there by five seconds. She made it to the basement by five seconds, and the whole upstairs was just, just completed. Destroyed. What uh, what damage was done to your house? Well, it, uh, all the and uh, most of the windows, big windows, went out, and there was uh, a number of holes in the roof. There was uh, a lot of damage on the walls, and siding, and all that. And then, of course, when the window went in, there were thousands, thousands of small pieces of glass up and that bedroom there and down in there in the living room over there. I mean in the dining room, living room, yeah, living room over there. It was thousands, you, you saw real small, so small you couldn't hardly see them. But some of them were a little larger and was spread all over the floor and all over the sofa, the carpets and everything. And uh, but up here the window blew up. And the door out there blew blew up. Yeah the door but, actually uh, blew up. We don't know what happened to that window, could never see that window again, but uh, uh, it was all wet, the carpets were all wet, you know, the rain came in. But the worst of all was that the uh, cover cooled up the attic that had fell down, and then half of the insulation was sort of pushed down through the hole that spread over the whole house, all the walls and everything. And it was just like that. And it was hard to wash it off even. Uh, you could wash it. You thought you had it off, but <laughs> it dries and you could see them still in there. 
So. It just happened that you were featured in the journal on today, and I'd like you to hold this up. Is a picture of you, uh -huh. and the article talks about the rebuilding right yes. here. Yes. So it's very timely that we are talking to you, and you're featured yeah. on the cover of our journal here in uh, this area. And uh, so when you came that night from church, what did you do? Did you stay here in the house? Oh, yes. But you didn't have power, did you? Did well, you it's have... all right. We still stayed. <laughs> um, we had water. They had come and turned off the gas. We had water, running water, um, bathroom facilities. That's good. Yeah. Uh, Telephone was still working. Yeah, for about a day. Oh. Right. Uh, Friday, is Friday is a Monday morning. Somebody yeah. dropped something in the in the connection box over there, I think. And then we lost it. So we had the telephone company come back in and, and clean out the area and get the connected. The response, though, was just tremendous. You cannot praise the Bridgeton Police, the Fire Department, the county, the, everyone. They, they were just, it was fabulous. We got here at 1030 and there was still, all of these rescue people were here. Um, so I can't say enough about how, how, how good they were. Had a number of students over here working. The next day, but yeah. The biggest group was uh, Service International. Mm -hmm. They had over a hundred people around here. All right. Um, and Alf was talking about the insulation. Uh, it wasn't the fiberglass, thank goodness. It was cellulose, but cellulose will kind of meld. If you can't wash it, you have to pick it up with uh, with the the the, uh, the adhesive brushes. You know, you have mm -hmm. to kind of rub it off because if you wash it, it's going to stick to your clothing. Did you do all that cleanup work yourselves inside the house? Oh, no, but we worked for days. We finally had a professional come. Our insurance company was very good. We had a professional cleaner come like about the fourth day, but we had the mask and we worked on this house and our children came in at various times. They all came in from Chicago, Idaho, and uh, Iowa to help us. And we all had masks. We worked all day long. That first night we slept in the basement from then on, I still slept here. The girls and I went to a, a motel or across the river. What was that, a hotel? And, but we worked till nine o'clock cleaning up the house. We worked for days, but it's something you wanted to do. I mean, you knew you were gonna have help, but you wanted to do all you could. Were there any fear of looters at all? I mean, in no. other areas you heard no. of this, but you didn't experience no. anything. No, and... Um, they had good patrol and they had the huge spotlights at the top of the street and they still are running. They were very selective about who could enter. You know, they had the, the admission uh, uh, tickets that you had to post in your window of your car and the police stopped who you. Who gave you those? The police. But that was true for over a month. So it was a very selective group that got to come up here and I had no real really didn't worry about looters. That's wonderful. Oh. Wonderful. And after that though, there were people come up here. Right. They, well they, they took the generator off from Patty Face, she lost that. And then Ron uh, lost what was he tell me today he lost was it the T V or was something he had no, in there. I hadn't that heard they had gone in and picked out. And so they did come in I think this is later on. Yeah, well, they, they had the police at the entrance of an old St. Charles and over here, Mark Twain, for quite a while. But then eventually they, uh, they let For over a month. So, yeah. yeah, there were looters around. And then there was, I don't know if you can call, call them looters. Some people, you know, collect scrap irons and copper and whatnot, and uh, some of those came around. and. I know one came around and said, they're not using that refrigerator over there. I said, well, I said, I don't know. It's sitting inside the house. I said, I think you better leave it alone. You know, it was a good refrigerator. So next day, the owner came by and I told him, I said, you did the right thing. <laughs> they, they had a mind giving that refrigerator to somebody. Oh, I see, I see. Well, let's backtrack a little bit. We know that you, 
are a former Bridgeton mayor. Yeah. And I'd like to hear how you got involved in that. Um, I read in the article that you were mayor from 1975 to 1979. So could you tell us how you got interested in being part of this? Well, uh, I was uh, a councilman for two and a half terms before I became mayor, so I had a little bit of knowledge of what it would take when I finally became mayor. Uh, what motivated me, I don't know, uh, sitting on the council there and working with the city officials, I, get the, I got a feeling about certain things could have been done a little bit differently. Maybe we could do something, you know, additional things. And, and so that got me one way. Was the city hall on Natural Bridge, where the airport just bought it out? Was that where you served as mayor? That's where I served as mayor. But when I served on the council, when we first began, it was city hall was across from uh, Patmel Grade School on Fifi Road, just north of Brandeke. So that was the first year I was there. What kind of building was that? Well, it was a frame building and. Uh, Police had some of the uh, trailers in there. It was pretty crowded. <laughs> but uh, did they have all the different boards and commissions that we have now, or was it a little more simple? Do you we had most of them, I guess. They probably added a few. We had all. Uh, we had all the ones that they in the charter. Of course, we had all of those. But uh, they probably added that. Uh, they might have added a few. Since that time, I can't remember now. Did um, you enjoy or feel good about your years as mayor? I did. I enjoyed it. I was got to be part of a number of things. I guess the biggest thing we we got to do was uh, we had a bond issue election and I got money to uh, to build the community center, which was finished two months. They opened it up two months after I. Went off as mayor. It wasn't quite finished when I was mayor, but uh, the present community center on Fifi. Yes, it's it's a really yeah. nice facility. Yeah, we uh, we raised enough. It was very easy to raise the money to those days. Everybody voted for that thing. Uh, bond issue, and we got the money, and we got the, we had some good offic city officials though, really good. It certainly has been. I mean, well if we didn't have it, I wouldn't have been able to do much good. Well, you have the new city hall too. Well, we, we had Chief Carrillo, which was an excellent chief of police. And uh, had Marty Corcoran, he was served as a city city manager. Really, that's what he did. Really great guy. And uh, he helped with a lot of these things, expansion of the parks, development of the parks. We had bought a lot of the land, had been bought, but they hadn't been developed. So that was another big thing we did during the years I was there, developing the parks. I enjoyed it. What about um, Northwest Plaza was already built by this time, but what about Earth City? Was that in the works when you were mayor? <laughs> no, it started when I was a uh, councilman. Let me see my puns out there, Earth City. Yeah, there we go. Mr. Perkinson put this out. Um, that was during. Uh, the time McInnes was mayor, that, that the people came in, which would be probably in the early 70s, okay. that they began this thing. They wanted to do it in Bridgeton. They wanted to have a rezoning north of uh, St. John's Rock Road, and to start with, they didn't get it. So then they, they ended up putting it down below, but uh, uh, south, of, south of the St. John's Rock Road. But they were going to have a big development there, housing development that never turned out. So anyway, Earth City became a reality, but not quite like it was shown in there. Earth City used to be quite swampy, and it was hard to believe that anybody would build anything there. Yes, that's true. Well, there was a controversy because it's a floodplain. Yeah. Well, they got the levy in, of course, one of these states the levy might not hold, we don't know, but uh, other levies have broken down. 
I know we, when we had that big um, flood back in what was it? Uh, 1993. 93. Uh, Daniel worried about, worried about it. I know the big trucks went back and forth from the quarry down there with sand and gravel mm -hmm. all day long. They were filling on there. They were fr afraid that the, that they might have a problem there. So, but they didn't. Um. When you uh, you served four years, did you feel that was all you wanted to serve? Or? Yes, I, I felt at the end that that was I done my part and that was it. Of course, I had already uh, four and a half years on the council, so the total the amount of time I spent there not the four and a half I was uh, five years on the council, so that's nine years. That's what that was enough. After being mayor, did you were you on any of the commissions or boards? Uh, I served uh, uh, on the on the police commission a number of years, and uh, now I'm serving on uh, personnel commission. Personnel commission don't have too much work done, <laughs> but you're still and, involved. Yes, a little bit. Yes, a little. And Barbara, what about you? Were you involved in the Bridgeton politics? No. But you said you were involved in Girl Scouts. Right. And that's particularly interesting to me because I was also a Girl Scout leader from Carrollton School. And so would you like to tell us a little bit about that? Were you a leader when your girls were growing up? Oh, yes. Um, I took them through brownies and Girl Scouts and then I went up cadets and then I took my son. I was a den mother. Uh, for him. Um, I love scouting and all of my kids like scouting and what what you can do and how you can help other people. Um, so it, it it was a joy. It was not a it was not work, it was fun. But I, I also did the, the summer camps and I remember um, you could bring your children along and I remember my son was little Oh, he was maybe six or seven, and he was in the different, you know, he he was in a camp where they're really taking care of the kids, but he was he would get so dirty, uh, filthy, you didn't even want him in the car going home. He, he had a ball. He wasn't going to camp, but he was... Um, was this Girl Scout Camp Takahoe or in... Uh, oh, I've gone to various ones. Saint no, Charles? day camp I here in the city I used to go over to the parks, but I also have done the um, the camping. Uh, we even did a hammock camping. Uh, I always did the hard camping, not the. We didn't want. We didn't want cabins. We wanted tents. We wanted hammocks. We wanted. We wanted to rough it more, and so we did the hammocks. That was that. It was camp fun. Cedar Ledge. Cedar Ledge, Tuckahoe. I've forgotten what they had a what hammock unit called Conestoga. Yes, I was there. Right. Yeah. yeah. Done both of those. I've done both it of was those. the farthest down that one road. And you had to carry all your stuff. Right. Oh, it was great, though. Great. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm glad you uh, enjoyed it, because yeah. I also was in Girl Scouts. And then I did the cadets. I did. Uh, I was a troop camper. I was no longer a leader, but mm -hmm. I was a troop camper. And then the boys, you can only do the boys. You can only be a dead mother. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But So you weren't involved in the Bridgeton politics, and you weren't Not on really. any of the commissions or boards? No. Uh, I do other things. I work with uh, community helping ministry, and I was involved with politics. You have to be involved if your husband's involved. You have to help with literature, take phone calls. Um, you're involved, but you know. PR. Yeah. As a telephone. Right, but but you know, I am. I'm not a political person. I was. I was the background, and I'm happy to stuff envelopes. Back then. Campaigns were different. You used to mail your literature. You can't afford to mail literature now. Uh, and you had quite a bit more literature than they, they're using now. Um, things were a little bit different back then. That was a long time ago. Who was mayor after you? Hal McInnes was before me. Following me was uh, Bill Abram. Okay. Yeah. Well, we cannot talk to Bill Abram. No. Of course, he's deceased, but we would like to talk to his wife, and we're hoping to do that in the near future. Were you supportive of him? Did he come and ask for your help, Bill Abram, sometimes? 
No. <laughs> no, I didn't. No. And I forgot. I guess he he had been on the council too before he became mayor, so he knew quite a bit about the job before he took it on. Uh, let me ask you. You s told us you were from Norway. Yes. When and how many times have you been able to return and visit? Well, I don't know. Countless times, I suppose. Now, I still have three sisters over there, and I have visited them uh, well, quite a few times. And then, as long as my dad and mom was uh, alive, I, I was quite frequently. Before I was married, I went home every year sometimes. Oh, okay. But uh, lately, I haven't been there that many times. Well, that last time was a couple of years ago, I think. Too busy with grandchildren now. No, it's just it's a little, it's a little um, harder to take on a trip like that when you're older, you know, when you're young, you don't think about it. How long does it take to get there? Do you fly out of New York? Uh, most of the time I was in New York, but I've gone through Washington, D.C., and gone through uh, Canada, uh, Minneapolis. Iceland? Well, that was a stop when you had the Icelandic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was years ago. Yeah. Icelandic airline had cheaper, cheaper fares than Scandinavian airline. Yeah. Well, were your parents living when you were mayor? Yes. Were yes. they were they kind of surprised that uh, you well, were? Um, uh, let me see now. No, my, far wasn't. My, no, only my my mother was uh, was uh, alive when I was mayor. But yeah, my dad came over to visit, and he died over here while he was here. Wow. Yeah. What did your mother think when you told her you were mayor here in St. <laughs> Louis? And probably was she wasn't too surprised. I don't think. She knew you were a go-getter. I think she knew he could do just about anything he wanted to do. Well, what do you want to do now? Let me ask you, what are the uh, things you would like to do now? I don't really have two big plans right now. Take live a day at a time. No big, no big uh, project or big plans ahead. Do you visit your grandchildren mostly here or at their homes? Well, they were just here now uh, visiting us, so it'll probably be a while before. But I've been to, we have three um, grandkids in Idaho, mm -hmm. and I have been there a number of times. We got two uh, grand, two girls up in Chicago, and I've been there a few times. Well, he's taken a couple of the grandkids to Norway for visits wow. separately. Mm -hmm. Wow. And he is a gardener, too. So he, he does, he is busy. A gardener here at your house? Yeah, he wants you. Well, we will. As soon as our tape is <laughs> over, maybe we will. And, you know, um, have too much to kind of tornado kind of trashed everything. Oh. I have to start over again. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> Yeah. What do you like to grow? Vegetables, flowers, or both? I, she is the flower girl. I'm the vegetable guy. I see. And fruit. Well, while we're talking about gardening, you know, I've uh, seen the senior garden plot they have on Natural Bridge by the old uh, government center. Were you involved in any way in that, setting that up? I wasn't. I wouldn't want to take credit for it, but we, we, we got it going, I guess, about about the time I was mayor, I guess. I don't remember too well now, but uh, they, I know we expanded it, kept expanding it, more people were interested in it. I don't know like, how the, what's going on now. It seems to be doing well. Yes, you? yes. Uh, we went to the Bridgeton Outdoor Concert this past Sunday and driving back, there were a couple of people tending, well, even though it was kind of raining. So I think it's it's used, and it's nice because for people that don't have opportunity to get out and plan something, whether they're in an apartment or uh, just don't have the room, it's a wonderful opportunity. I think so too. And in the city, city department go over there, and or is it apartment, park department maybe that's doing it now? They kind of 
plow it up for so it makes it easier for the senior citizen to go in there and plant. So you help along that way. Well, we have blueberries that Alf picked today, and he also picked some black currants. That's wonderful. That's and wonderful. the tomatoes are. Don't have much this year. The <laughs> tomato thrashed the blueberries too. They, they blew off all the blossoms. Oh, that is that's and the branches. Is a small bowl. And uh, same with them. With the grapes, <laughs> the grapes kind of lying on the ground. I mean, the the, the vines and the steel post that I had used to keep them up with, they bent the steel pole, you know, bent, bent it like so. Yeah. Don't you just wonder when you walk out your front door and, and see all of the damage and reconstruction going on, don't you just, aren't you just amazed that there was no one seriously injured? That is, that is true. I'm very much, uh, I think, how in the world could we all, not even one, got a single scratch. That's, that's something. Well, we're very it's fortunate amazing. because after the tornado that did do so much destruction here in Bridgeton, there was a tornado in the southern states, yeah. in what, Alabama or Mississippi? Mm -hmm. Alabama. And then Joplin. And then Missouri got hit again in Joplin yeah. recently. So we were fortunate because, uh, as you said, at least we uh, didn't lose anyone, or I didn't hear of any serious injuries, no. whereas they did. We had no injuries on this street mm -hmm. here. But I expect there might have been some in the city in Bridgeton because, you know, there was a lot of damage up on old St. Charles. And behind us here over on Taylor, uh, the hospital had some emergency room visits, but no one was admitted. Oh, just emergency any, room. Yeah, with any uh, over yeah, no, no overnight stays. Oh, St. Charles, you know, the, that house there on the corner that was completely. Mm -hmm. I think they dug out the people in there, and they mm -hmm. were hurt that bad. The people, the neighbors came over and That's turned amazing. them out. You, uh, I noticed you have some printed material here on the table. Would you like to share some of that with us right now? Well. You know, uh, this this was the coated ornament since we didn't have a book when when I first became uh, got on the council we didn't have this and, but I had nothing to do with getting it I'm just saying how the city grew up mm -hmm. and we got uh, got the zoning ordinance put together and uh, I had I don't take any credit for that either but it was during the time I got on council that we got this. And uh, you know, as I have here. if it's okay, we can t we could take some still pictures of some of those things after after we finish with the video. The Chief Creelo gave me a picture of all the all his uh, policemen one time, and uh, before he died, we visited him out there uh, at his home. And I brought them all back. But before I did it, I copied. So here's a copy of some of the old police men that we had <coughs> when I when I first got down there. That's a Chief Crail over there. And uh, there's Major Fennel. He lived down in Bridgeway. And there is uh, Gordon Lewis. He was the second in command under Crail. But uh, and there's the former mayor, Muter. I mean, for a former chief, Walt Muter. He just. Uh, was signed, I guess, not long ago. But some of the old timers here too. Uh, that was uh, the chief secretary, Lee Lotz. He was there a long, long time. And, uh, uh, we want to look at the rest of them, a whole bunch of them there. And I had uh, fortunate to have him. Uh, Mary Alderman was the city clerk when I became, uh, when I got on the council, and she was there when I became mayor. And we didn't have a city administrator for a while, and she took over and did quite a job. Both what, jobs. what is her name? Mary Oliven. She has passed away now. Oh, I see. But uh, she did a very good job. She actually was hired by Earl Davis. He was still alive. He's another mayor. He was before, before uh, well, he was there when I first got on the city council. And I guess during that time that really the city became a more of a city than I had before. We got the charter, you know, and and that's and city starting expanding, subdivisions starting coming in and, and Bridgeway and 
West Haven and Kelp, and these all grew up during that period. When we first came to uh, Bridgeton, it was a lot less people here at that time than, it, than, the, than there are, are now. Yeah. Can you share with us any uh, memories of Carrollton since she lived on Fran Clare, which um, of course Carrollton is practically no more due to the airport buyout. Can you share what I had was one like? little thing that I can't forget. Oh, okay. It's a dog. You know, when these houses were taken down over there, you know, they left the ground and removed the houses. We were one of the last ones on the street to move on. And here's this dog coming up to our house. And I tried, you'd better go home. Well, he just lies down in front of me. I tried to push him away. He had been going up and down. I knew I'd seen him before. Up and down the street, he couldn't find a house. Oh. So, so that dog was somebody's dog, and I don't know who. There was no collar on it. But he must have uh, tried to get home and couldn't find a house. And uh, so... That was the time when we just had to move out of the house and said, we can't take that dog with us. I said to myself, and uh, I said, we better see if, what the dog catcher, maybe he can find somebody with, that wanted. So I called the dog, the uh, dog catcher, I know the name is now, Animal Control yes. or something. Sure. And he came and says, that's a nice dog, he says, and the dog, the dog was just lying right in front of me. <laughs> and he looked up at me with his eyes, you know. And then he, he says, okay, I t I'll take him. And then he got this thing out of the car, sort of a thing put around the neck. And, you know, I said, I don't think you need to do that. Let me just put him in the car for you. And I picked him up, no problem. And he, he felt pretty good, and I felt pretty good. But I felt sad putting him in that car. And that was the last time I saw the dog, the dog with the dog. I kind of felt bad about that dog. So you think someone just left their dog? I think they might have taken it with them, and then the dog uh, tried to get back to the house somehow and got lost. Maybe. And then he couldn't find his way back to where he was supposed to go. Yes, that may have been the... Uh... I, I don't know, but the dog was just, he wasn't going to leave me at all. Oh, and I didn't yeah. give him any food or anything. Uh, yeah. People Strange don't have part. much better experience going back over there. Now. That that was one of the experiences I won't forget. But uh, it's very disorienting. They've taken all the street signs down. So mm -hmm. Even though the streets are still there, you don't know which one is which. And unless but our house was it. actually located at the spot which now would be between the runway and the taxiway. Uh -huh. Yeah, the run the taxiway on the side of the runway. That's where our house. Was. Mm -hmm. And we were one, one the last. We were just ready to uh, move out of the house when this dog came on. Yeah. How did you decide to come here to Harmon Estates? This is a beautiful area. And how old do you think Harmon Estates is? Well, I think, and let me see now, Harmon Estate was, uh, was started back in the, I think, the early 60s, or maybe late 50s, early 60s because we had already moved into West Haven and uh, there, were, there was a few houses on Harmon State Drive so they were probably, it could have been late 50s. Do you remember the builder? Well, who was in the person? Bill, Bill, Bill Susan was. Oh, Mr. Will Susan. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was, he was the builder of most of them. Of course, after that was small subdivision like this one here is, is not Harmon, it's not really Harmon state, but that's what people think of it. This is Harmon in Terrace. Oh, really? And there are several small ones in Harmon estate. The whole thing, all people think of it as Harmon estate. Well, it's kind of attached. You can drive from one street yeah. to the other without leaving. And so. the same entrance to the outside world mm -hmm. both, <laughs> on both ends. You either go up to Old St. Charles or you go over to St. Charles Rock Road. It's the only two entrances and exits. Do you take part in any of the activities through the Bridgeton Community Center? They offer so many activities yeah. for young, middle, old. No, I don't. Uh, 
I don't really do that. Uh, I go over there maybe once in a while to the sit in on this council meeting to see how the things are going today. Uh, something special happens, I go over there. But uh, no, I, I I play bridge once in a while, like she said, duplicate bridge. But that happened to be up in uh, Hazelwood at the uh, Bridge Haven, they call it. If they had it in Bridge, that would be playing in Bridge, but they all don't don't have one here. And Barbara, do you have you taken advantage of any of their trips that the uh, the seniors go on? No, I haven't. Um, I'm very involved with community helping ministry, uh, which is involved with the community, and I, I haven't really branched out to the, the different classes and trips and so forth. I know um, they have good; they're offering good things, and I will someday, but not. Really. <laughs> um, well, I can you tell us about this helping? What is it called again? Well, CHM, or Community Helping Ministry. It's the band of churches here in Bridgeton uh, supporting, we support a food pantry and an agency which helps um, with rent, utilities, things like that. For people uh, low income or people who have emergencies. Uh, and, it's, and it's housed over in Arlington Methodist Church. But uh, it's house by, uh, it's, it's volunteers. We have a paid director, but everybody else is a volunteer. Have you been busier with that since the tornado? I haven't worked since the tornado. Oh. I just cannot manage it. Yeah. Things are looking up finally. We didn't get windows till last week. And let me tell you, living with no windows, boarded yeah. up, we had this window here and we had that window yeah. there, and two back windows up there. Everything else was boarded up. Pretty dark um, in here. I, I, there were just so many things to do. I, I'm going back uh, in a couple of weeks, um, okay. but I just, I just said I, I can't handle it. <laughs> I just can't. Yeah. I One crisis to, at a time. Huh? I have oh, to. Oh, you have care. just so much energy you can give. Yeah, I have to take care of my own emergency right now. Well, we really appreciate you letting us come over and talk to you. It's been very enjoyable getting to know you and. We appreciate your service for Bridgeton, and sorry this did happen to your beautiful home. This is a beautiful area. Oh, we were lucky. We were very lucky. Mm -hmm. And I hope the other neighbors rebuild, and I'm sure their mm -hmm. homes will be beautiful again. And uh, Joe Turner and myself would like to maybe take a few pictures now. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs>